It's Positively Muskegon, Andy O'Reilly down here today, and I gotta tell you what, having a GoPro camera is the best thing in the world because you get in places like the Hume Home, which is where we are today. We're right in the parlor of the Hume Home. Everybody's getting excited about the season. The Lakeshore Museum Center is opening. This is Joni Dorsett. She is here with me today to talk a little bit about the, I got, got the name right, right? You did? I'm, I'm, you speak up good and loud because this mic <laughs> picks up good things, but okay. you, you've done radio, you know how I, it is. I, I have. <laughs> Get ready in front of a camera. Well, I know, right? And then they put me in front of a camera, too, and everybody's like, ugh, can't they find a better host? That's right. We're radio people. <laughs> Joni is uh, the communications director for the Lakeshore Museum Center, and one of the great things about the Muskegon Museums is that there are a lot of them. How many do we have? There are 15 museums. 15 museums yeah. all through Muskegon, and they're not all centrally located in one place. No. Nope, that's throughout the county. Yep. So there's some in Muskegon, you know, the city of Muskegon, like some of ours. There's some up in Whitehall. There's a museum in Montague. There are in some of the small townships have museums. So there are a lot more museums a than lot of them. anybody, you know, thought until they started counting them. Even yeah. the museum directors themselves were like, wow. Wow. I didn't realize there's there a bunch so of, us. of us. Yeah. We yes. were just at the Heritage Museum yesterday talking to Adam down there. And, you know, in the wintertime, things kind of settle down around Muskegon a little bit. We go into the, the off season where yeah. some improvements get made and all right. that stuff. But Adam was telling us that the opening's coming there and you guys are getting ready for a full season as well. Definitely. Let's talk about the Lakeshore Museum Center and everything coming up okay. this year. Well, as you said, we're in the Hume Home, which yep. is part of the Heckley and Hume Historic Site. Muskegon's most well-known lumber barons. These were their homes that we had And they're restored. nice. And are continually doing things, as I told you, the carpet yep. underneath us was replaced over the winter months to be more appropriate for the time period. So this site opens on Monday, May 2nd. Okay. And then just behind us in the next block, we have our Fire Barn Museum yep. and the Skolnick House of the Depression Era. Those yep. open on Monday as well. And then on the northern end of the county, our new park, Michigan's Heritage Park, opens on Monday as well. Perfect. So everything we've got. Rolling we the whole season out. Monday. That's you right. It's, it's kind of spring around here. Kind of. Yes. Not really yes. 100%, but kind of. Let's talk about how many visitors does the Lakeshore Museum Center see a year? Probably 45,000 plus. 45,000 people? I've been here close to 15 years, and I would have never guessed yeah. that many people yeah. come through. Hi. Well, we are they tour groups? Are they? Um, how does a, it work? Of, it kind of the time of year makes yeah. a difference. Yep. So, like the, these sites are closed yep. from October until May again. Yep. So, you know, that's their season in terms of attendance. But the main museum is open year round, and during the school year, a lot of those numbers are school kids. Sure. We serve over 20,000 school children in a year's time. Um, with primarily programming at our museum site, but we also have um, our, our curators in the education department also go out to schools. So with all the changes in school economics, busing has become an issue sure. for schools. So it's been increasingly important that we can get to them. Get to them. They can't get to us. Sure. Um, a great thing we did last year at our Lumber Barons Ball is we asked our guests to sponsor a bus for schooling so we could give grants. So we had over $2,000 raised nice. for just those busing grants. So people that were at the ball didn't necessarily need to buy a basket yeah. of whatever, yeah. but said, you know, I want to help the museum. What can and I do? If I give them a check for $100, that pays for, you know, a bus of kids to come for a field trip. Awesome. That, that, and that Lumber Baron's Ball is quite a party, is what I've heard. It is. I've never been there. Well, you know, I've been waiting for that invite, hint, hint. Okay, you're on the list. You're on the list. I've got your email. I don't know if I can afford it, to be honest with you. But so what what are people most surprised about with the offerings from the Lakeshore Museum Center? Is it is it the is it the, the long term heritage? Is it the the era where everything was glitzy and glamoury like the Hackley and Hume well, home? I think people are surprised at the breadth of what we have to offer. Yeah. Because a lot of people don't they don't connect the, the five sites. And yeah. that's something, you know, in our marketing and advertising we do focus on. But sure. people you know, people pay attention to what they want to pay attention to. And that's the truth, you know? isn't it? So yeah. that's why like talking to you is wonderful because we're talking about all of our sites. Yep. So people that are hearing this and seeing this, you know, realize that this is part of the Lakeshore Museum, as is the Skolnick House, as is the Fire Barn, and is as is the park. Has North. has there ever been talk of consolidating all these I mean, you know, you go over to the Van Andel Museum Center in Grand Rapids and they've got the Gaslight Village and then they've got the manufacturing area, area you know, different areas. Has there ever been talk about building a, a big center like that here? Well, not really because, you know, 
these houses are. Oh, I know that. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm yeah. just saying. You know, I mean, but to, to would it be a bigger attraction? Do you think if 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 it was all centralized? Well, I would say this. We really are centralized yeah. in Muskegon. Okay. I mean, you you leave this building a half a block, you're at the fire barn and the Skolnick house. One block, you're at um, the main museum site. Hop in your car, 22 minutes. You're in Whitehall. You're good at this. You know you're interviewing stuff. You really know your stuff. <laughs> Does I was, for a while. <laughs> I was just curious, though, if, if, if there'd ever been talk of, of making one big place close to here or... Uh, well, I mean, in a sense, Michigan's Heritage Park is one big place. Yep. Because you're starting in the visitor center, you're going out, there's a Mastodon dig, so that's a historic sure. situation that you're, you're experiencing. Then you're going to the Native American Wigwam Village, so that's another historic stop. See, I haven't been to these yet. Well, so you're I, coming. Bad. You could probably talk some <laughs> tickets out of me. Um, and then we've got a fur traders, camp, or fur traders post there, a settler's cabin, a Civil War stop. Um, information about the Underground Railroad. Wow. There's a farmhouse. There's a CCC camp. We're going to have gardens there, and we're going to have chickens. This Perfect. Year. So, you know, that's 10,000 years of history. So, in a sense, what you're asking about is what we built in Whitehall. Per she's good. She really knows her stuff. Hey. It, to talk about some of the specifics, if they were to come down to the Hackley and Hume homes, what are, what, give, give, give us a, a quick walkthrough. What do they what do they see when they first get here? You're going to do um, the oh, get a guided tour. Okay. So we've got staff and volunteers who are very well trained on these houses, and we'll show you, you know, the various aspects of each house. Um, talk to you about the lumbering era. Talk to you about life in Muskegon. You know, in the late 1800s, early 1900s. Um, we do special events here. Really? Um, next Saturday, we're doing a Victorian tea on the lawn, Ooh. which I think we have one slot left. Really? So that'll be a fun, that's a new event for us, you know, an outdoor event. So um, that'll be a nice activity. We do some, you know, people always want something for free. Of course. <laughs> so, Muskegon's favorite four-letter <laughs> yes, word, right. free. Your discount. <laughs> so um, we always do Mother's and Father's Day, our free admission for the mother or the father. Cool. For Muskegon County residents, just kind of a thank you. So, yep. you know, you can take your mom out for brunch, bring her here, and she gets free too. Sure, what it was like you back know. in the day. Yeah, there you and go. you've you've got a promotional day coming up as well. Is that yes? The, talk about that. Um, we're doing um as we were talking about all of the museums mm -hmm. in the in the county. Thirteen of them are involved in a be a tourist in your own backyard. Perfect. I mean, like we're talking a lot of people. You know, they you don't get to know your own community because guilty. Yeah, I mean, seriously, we all are. We all are. Because yeah. I have to confess. I have not necessarily <laughs> been in all of these, and I'm saying it out loud. So the 21st, um, the Muskegon Heritage Museum is free, Muskegon Museum of Art, the Silversides, the LST, the White River Lighthouse, and our park, Michigan's Heritage Park in Whitehall. All free. So all of those are free on May 21st, which is a Saturday. Okay. Then the next week, so uh, Memorial Day weekend, the Clipper is free, Muskegon South Pierhead Light, the Railroad Caboose Museum, and Dr. Minardi's Apothecary Shop in, um, I guess it's in Montague because it's, well, it's in Whitehall. It's kind of right in that right middle there in the section. Middle. Yeah. It's kind of in both. Um, the Montague Museum. Whitegue. Whitegue, there you go. <laughs> and the James Jackson Museum of African American History in Muskegon Heights. And then this site that we're in, the Hackley and Hume site. All free. So, yeah, so Perfect. all free. So all the people who, you know, are out there and haven't tried the museums, uh, you, your excuse is gone. That's it. It's free. Make sure you come down here. Thanks for taking a couple of minutes you to talk welcome. to us today. And uh, I'm telling you, is is I I can't be the only one here in town that hasn't been down to these places. And it's an eye-opening experience. It'll blow you away. It's really worth coming down to take the tour. The Lakeshore Museum Center. Thanks again for stopping oh, by. You're welcome. Andy. And uh, beautiful place you got here. Well, thank you. Thanks for coming on. You bet.